So you want to print out the Iron Man helmet, but you have a small print bed. I will show you how. In this video, we're gonna go from start to finish on how I printed my Iron Man helmet on my Ender 3 V2, which has an extremely small printing space. I'm gonna keep this video short and simple. I'm gonna make it very quick as I can, but so let's get to the points. Printing off is gonna be the printing process. Now, this is going to be how you orient your parts onto your printing bed. Now, whether you get a full helmet in the STL file, whether you're getting it from Walsh or Nico Industries, it depends on if the helmet's coming in parts. So when you throw it into your slicing program, you may have to do a lot of slicing. This specific Iron Man helmet I got was free on Thingiverse, and it came in all of the parts already broken down, so I didn't have to do any slicing and I didn't have to upscale it or downscale it. I just kept it at 100%, ended up turning out completely fine. As far as size goes, I firmly believe I have a bigger than normal head, especially with my nose. A lot of helmets give me trouble because of how enlarged my nose is, thank you God. This helmet was spot on and it was the very first helmet I ever printed and it came out at 100% and I had zero trouble with it. When you're grabbing your files, you wanna make sure that you're not putting the supports on the side that's showing, right? So if you're printing this out, print in standing up like this, or all the supports were underneath here. So you could see right there, that's where all the support grime is. And you don't want to orient your prints where it's like this and the supports are on the main parts of your print. Whenever you're orienting these, moving them around, rotating them on your printing bed. Try to keep it, the lines can be nice and smooth when the filament is being melted down and it can layer really nice because you could see on the top, a little bit right, right over there, you could see some layer lines because that's when it started to flatten out and hit that circle coming on the way up. Depending on how you position this on your bed, it's actually gonna save you a lot of trouble later on through the sanding process. The more smoother your print's gonna be, the easier your sanding is gonna be. You're not gonna to have to sit down there shaving lines or doing putty or filling it or anything like that. You're gonna have a smooth post-process period. Also, when it comes to the printing process, you want to start to look at things where you can use less supports. And sometimes this is really, really hard. I had four failed prints because my supports gave out. You get better with it over time. I was able to print out my Mandalorian helmet like that because I started getting the hang of using less supports, printing things upright. It saves you more money on your filament and it saves you a lot of printing time. Like this was almost a week and a half full of printing because I was being sloppy with how I oriented it on my printing bed. And then the last one for printing is just gonna be making sure you have enough filament. I always wait until I'm like halfway through a, my last roll and then I'll order some more. In my head, I just, I'm like, I have to order more filament, I have to order more filament. So if you know you're gonna get a helmet or a big project, just get two to three rolls. That way you're stocked up and if you go through bad prints or failed prints, you could just keep the ball rolling and you're not gonna sit there and get upset at yourself because you're, now I gotta wait and take a huge break because I don't have enough filament. So just make sure you have enough filament on hand to knock this project out to make your timing process a lot quicker. Piecing this sucker together. I originally tried with screws, don't do it. Don't, don't do the screws. That was a big waste of time. If you're trying to save prints, which I do. Like some of my prints don't come out good, but I'm like, I always tell myself like, I could save this. Like, let me not waste time or filament, right? What I notice is that if you don't get the certain screw size right, you start to split your pieces, like the main parts of your helmet. So I would say just completely avoid that crap. Don't do the screws. Absolutely do not do acrylic glue. This will work for a lot of smaller things. You can see right here, that's acrylic glue. As I was, I finished painting this chin piece and I went to put it on and that acrylic glue just spider webbed up and it, it pisses me off because it kind of ruined my helmet. Could I go over and paint it, but it already has a clear coat. So I'm just like, whatever at this point. Acrylic glue, if you're not like, extremely careful with it and you like pull it away or 
whatever, it spider webs out so it could destroy your paint like it did on that part of my helmet. Everything together, the quickest and fastest and like heartwarming way you could do it is just by soldering it. Go get yourself a cheap soldering kit those with different attachments and you can figure out which one works best for you. But I mean, I piece this helmet together in like freaking 20 minutes with the soldering thing. And it was taking me hours and like two days to try to do it with the acrylic glue. And it still didn't even hold up. It kept falling apart because that soldering, you're melting the plastic together as if it was being printed out all together. So definitely a hundred percent solder it together, save yourself some time, and save yourself anger and just solder it together. Moving on to the sanding process. The sanding is gonna take you the most time. You can hand sand it. It depends on if you have sensitive areas on your print. If you're kind of like iffy about it, go with hand sanding. Half of this helmet I pretty much did with hand sanding. And then I have a machine sander that I use. A lot quicker, and I, I would say it's more, much more efficient. But if you're doing a very detailed project, you're gonna have to get in there with your hand and sand that sucker down. I only use three types of grits. To knock down a lot of the layer lines, I used the 250 grit. Immediately went to the 150 grit, smoothed it out, smoothed that 250 out. Right after that, I went into the 350 and it just became super buttery like that. Hit it with the automotive primer, sanded it down again with the 350. But with this project, I got lucky I didn't have any gaps or any putty or anything that I didn't have to fill. My Mando helmet, I did. So my next video will be with my Mando helmet and how to fill in gaps. 350 comes in there and it smooths that primer out. I hit it with another layer of primer. I wanna make sure that first coat's like the dusting coat. You do not wanna go super heavy on that first coat because you still may wanna smooth and round everything out depending on if you have faulty areas or spots that you are really noticeable for you. And then another thing is that if you're having problems with certain areas, you can use wood filler. Right here, I had a little bit of wood filler because this was technically a failed print. If you see it, this side smooth as a bottom, and then this side you come over and then my, I guess my print bed got sideways on it, but you could put wood filler in there and blend that in if you wanted to. Depends on how strong your lines are. If your lines are really abrasive and noticeable, I would go with like wood filler, could gunk it up with some uh, spot putty and then smooth it out. Um, I think spot putty is a lot better than wood filler. If you have huge gaps, wood filler comes in handy, but you could smooth a lot of things out with wood filler. Make your lines blend a lot easier with wood filler and then doing your sanding process with it. So if you got gaps or heated areas, hot areas, use your wood filler. Not to the best part, the painting process. So I posted this on the 3D form or the 3D page on Facebook and the number one question I got was what are your colors? It's probably a really big issue with a lot of people is just finding the correct colors. And then I went to Ace Hardware store and I got the metallic gold for the faceplate. And then the rest of the helmet was like burgundy. Yeah, it, I didn't get red, I got burgundy. Clear coat that you apply that 1K clear coat that you apply is gonna really bring out that shine. So if you go with just your like basic red, it's maybe like a candy red, that red that you kind of don't want. And since the suit is a little bit darker, it's that burgundy color, that blood red with burgundy because it's gonna be darker. Clear gloss comes in and it just makes it pop and shine. So that's where you get all your shiner from. My primer, I did three coats. So I sanded in between first two and that last one, I just left it. My color painting coats, I did three coats of the gold and I did three coats of the burgundy as well. The last one was the clear gloss, a 1K clear gloss. And you could do two to three coats. It depends, that clear gloss, you really gotta wrap it around. And the biggest thing is that let that thing dry. Like, don't rush in there. Like, the, the paint could dry up a lot quicker. That, that clear gloss goes on really thick, so have some fans in there. Keep the air circulating, that's another big part. Making sure you're doing this in a ventilated area, but also having some dry air come in to dry that sucker up. Sit for a whole day. Like, I didn't, once I finished the helmet and I did that last 
third layer of clear gloss, I left it for almost a whole day and a half. I didn't even look at it, didn't bother with it, didn't want to touch it. And then when I went to go touch it, it was nice and smooth, didn't leave any fingerprints, everything was good to go. I was extremely satisfied. For a quick little break, this video is sponsored by Nico Industries. Nico Industries, if you guys are looking for awesome helmets, awesome armory, cosplay, toys, anything that you could print out that's amongst your nerd world, then go to Nico Industries, check them out. They have a huge, huge library for you guys. Once you pay for it, you get the STL file in your email and you could print immediately from when you purchase said file of what you want to print out. Now, as you can tell, it's not motorized yet. I have all the parts, but the cool thing about 3D printing is that you just keep working on projects and projects and projects and you don't really finish them. That's what I'm discovering about 3D printing. <laughs> and my next video will be, I crank this sucker out in a week. I'm gonna show you guys from A to Z on how easy this process was, how to piece it together, and the color scheme of this helmet. So until then guys, see you in the next one. Like and subscribe if you want to for future projects.